Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we've had a super fun day of hearing lots of good preaching from the pastor's conference. We've been encouraged and we've studied the Beatitudes of a pastor, what it is, the characteristics that God um, looks for in all of his followers, but specifically in pastors. Yeah. And so it's been a really good day and we're ending our day reading the book of Deuteronomy and Dusty and I just spent some time singing the song of Moses. We did not. Probably not. Okay. We did not. But <laughs> if, I, if you know this, he did not sing the song of Moses. I did not. He did sing worship really loud because Travis Cottrell is our worship leader. And it's been really I did good. sing loud tonight. He and did. here's the thing. What I lack in talent, I make up for in volume. Absolutely. So I may not be good, but at least I'm loud. All right? <laughs> Is that a good thing? Deuteronomy 32. Okay, Let's get to that. Song of Moses. Yep. We're, we're creeping up into um, getting closer and closer to the end days of Moses. Um, and so this song, obviously, is kind of a recap of what God has been telling them, like, what is going to happen if you choose to break covenant with me and you choose to um, start living like the land around you and following other gods and worshiping other idols? This is what's going to happen. And so this song, like any song we sing, hopefully is something that gets stuck in their head and that they learn and they never forget. Um, and it serves as a reminder of what can happen. And instead, you know, I'm sure the hope is that it would prevent them from turning from the Lord um, and, and keep them from making those decisions. But also we know that they're going to get the blessings and the curses. And so we know these things are going to happen. And just like every other chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, we are not without hope. And so the song conveys that. One thing that I really love about the song, and Terry Lee Cobble pointed it out, but when in the song it talks about when the Israelites turn from God, well, God's going to start like blessing the other nations. And he's going to almost like, you know, like when your little kid is, doesn't want to come to you and so you act like you like the dog better than the kid and the kid gets jealous and all of a sudden you get what you want from the kid. Well, that's a father's love that I see. But guess what? We're not, for the most part, Israelites. And so this is a blessing that we reap also. When God gives blessings to the other nations, we get to reap this. And, and what I see, though, in all of it is God's plan for good in every single situation, even in um, Israel turning against him and like the one thing he's warned them about and that breaks his heart, he still uses it. He uses it to love on other nations and hopefully show them who he is to draw them to him, but also to draw Israel back to him. And so nothing is wasted by God. Everything is intentional. Everything has purpose. And that's beautiful to me. Yeah. So you'll notice what uh, Moses does in the song. By the way, uh, you got to think about why did Moses choose to end his ministry by writing a song and teaching it to the people? Uh, he did this because, remember, in their days, they didn't have publishing houses and digital phones with apps with the Bible on it. And so Moses had just finished writing the books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But you know how many copies they had? It, it originally, it was just the one. So Moses took these books, and he gave them to Joshua. Joshua entrusts them, and later, the later they start kind of producing more and more copies. But do you know how many copies the average person had in their own home? None. This is a treasure. So what did they have? They could have a song. It, it, there's something about us we can, I mean, you got five books of the Bible and they might have favorite verses, but a song is something they could take with them. That's why Moses ends with this. Now, he, he's also going to reach back in the back. He's going to tell them a little bit about their history. He's going to say, God found you in the wilderness. And then he's going to talk to them about where they are now. He's going to talk to them about how good God's going to be. Matter of fact, he's, then he's going to point ahead to, to how they're going to disobey and how God's going to bring them back. And just the, he's going to bring everything full circle because Moses serves in the role as a prophet in the Bible. And a prophet is one who speaks for the Lord. And they do two things. They foretell, F-O-R-E, tell. That means they like predict. 
So what you're going to find is Moses talking a lot about what you are going to do, how you are going to disobey. But they also forth tell, F-O-R-T-H. They're going to tell you the truth. <laughs> they're going to tell you whether you like it or not. That's what the prophet does. Matter of fact, here's how Moses starts. He says, give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. So he's calling the world, the universe, like a courtroom. He's calling them to be the jury of a contract between God and his people. He said, let my teaching drop down as the rain and my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on tender herb and showers on the grass. He's talking about how rain falls over the world, how it soaks in the ground, how it permeates everything around it. That's what rain water that's does. That's good lyrics. And it, yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> and what he's talking about, he, that's how the teaching of God drizzles down and it, it, it soaks into its environment. And into so we the marrow into the, the joints and the marrow into us. Yes, I'm proud. Of, that's good. All right, so <laughs> so when Moses does it, here's my favorite, one of my favorite pieces to this. In verse ten, he says he found him in a desert land and in a wasteland, a howling wilderness, and he encircled him and instructed him to keep keep them as the apple of his eye. That that that's an idiom. It's uh the apple of his eye. That is the uh that's the area of the eye. That's the pupil. So what he's saying is he says God chose even when you were nothing nowhere. You weren't just somebody somewhere. You were nobody nowhere. God was the only one looking for you. And when he found you, he put you in the center of his eye and he did not take his eye off of you. Now listen. Not, this is telling them a lot about them. Warren Wiersbe said that learning the character of God should be a major concern in the school of life for God's people. Uh, it tells us a lot about the Lord. It tells us a lot about his people. But, uh, but you know, here at the point where Moses is dying, I'm, I'm interested in Moses here. Mm -hmm. Okay? So even though God's workers pass away, the work carries on, I still, I still like Moses. Uh, matter of fact, I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking about a psalm that Moses wrote. He he wrote another song. Psalm 90 is uh, is is from Moses. His only one. Huh? That's right. And so in Psalm 90 verse 12, it says this. He says, "So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom." Here's all I like. Moses wrote that psalm. And he said, "I wish we'd number our days. We'd know just how short life is." And we would recognize the good old days while we're still in them. And we'd make the most of our days. Okay? And when Moses writes that, I bet when Moses was called to, to serve the Lord by leading the people, he didn't expect all he was getting into. He just knew he was being called from the wilderness of Midian to go to Egypt to get the people and take them to a promised land in a journey that should have been weeks or months if they were, if they were faithful. Moses had no idea he was going to sit in the wilderness with these cranky people for 40 Don't years. Don't sign me up for that. But you know what? He did it. And, um, and he was faithful. He wasn't perfect. And he had a lot to learn and a lot to be transformed that, that had to be transformed in him over the course of those 40 years. But man, he did it. And, um, you know, you may not be where God wants you to end up, but you're somewhere. And so number your days. Know the good old days while you're in them. Be faithful to the Lord. You don't know whether it's going to be weeks, months, or years that he has invested in you to bring you where you need to be. But listen, be faithful. Serve the Lord. Show up every day for work and be faithful. All right? We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.